just go for it. Give it your best shot. Um, if worst comes to worst, you can leave. Like, um, you're not... It's not a jail. You're not stuck here for life. Um, it's a really good experience. Um, no matter what, like, it's worthwhile. Um, everything that I've done so far here, I could take back into the normal civilian life and it would benefit me in so many more ways than I ever thought. Um, so, yeah, just give it all you've got and if you're thinking about it, just go for it. You're never going to find out if it's for you unless you try. Hundred percent, definitely. Yeah. yeah, definitely. You will never, you never get left behind. Like, for instance, on weapons, if you don't pass first try, you'll get four or five, six more attempts. They want you to get in, and it might be that specific learning style, or uh, sorry, teaching style that isn't getting through to you. So they'll bounce you off different um, recruit instructors and even uh, platoon sergeants and platoon commanders until it sort of gets to you. You never fail something here. It's just a different pathway you take to yeah. succeed. Um, everything's like a learning curve. Um, for myself, I didn't pass the PFA in week one and um, all my section commanders, the corporals, they all kind of motivated me, they pushed me, they helped me. Um, I went over to Digger Jang's where I did PT to build my strength um, so I could get to those push-ups needed. And um, yeah, you can stay there until your fitness is up to it and then you go just straight back into where you were in training and you keep going on. Um, it's, they're so helpful and they're, they want to see you succeed. They don't want to push you back, they just want to see you like build up and yeah, they. They help so much. Yeah, they give you every opportunity to succeed. So the other day we were doing our weapon um, firing test on the range and there were some people who were struggling with that a bit and the instructors just stayed there um, for hours just giving them extra training, doing the test again, extra training, doing the test again and eventually they got there and then the platoon sergeant was um, talking on the bus on the way back um, about you know how proud he was of those people for... Um, just, you know, sticking with it and um, continuing to go and try again after after a few failures. So, yeah, they really um, want to see everyone pass all You've the got assessments. every opportunity in the world to succeed and if you don't the first time, you just get retrained and you pass the next. It's super easy, yeah. Week one and week nine. Yep. So you do your one in week one to make sure that you're still fit after your first, um, obviously the PFA before you join. Um, just make sure you're still up to that minimum standard. And then from there, just before you go out field to make sure that you're fit enough and healthy enough to actually complete 10 days of walking and Without getting any vigorous or... training, yeah. Yeah, so the PFA is the pre-enlistment fitness uh, assessment. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you do it before um, you get here and then again once you once you get here. Uh, we've just started our field tra uh, training, me and Jack. Um, so it goes for 10 days. Um, you're at Camp Blue, which is like, uh, almost like a progression area. So you like a staging area. Yeah, you start off there and you learn the basics of fields. So you learn how to put up uh, a hoochie, which is like your little tent that you sleep in. Um, you'll learn, you know, uh, section attacks and different things that you'll need for outfield. Um, and you're there for the first two days um, before hiking it out um, to the actual field area. And you sort of move away. It's moving more from platoon training, so training with like, uh, I think we have 35 people, to working in sections, which is your smaller team of like 12 or so. So I'll be out field with my corporal, Corporal Lowe, my section commander, and he'll be teaching us sort of how to operate in the field and passing on his knowledge about like he's learnt in 14 or so years in the army. A lot of the other guys I train with have dependents at home, so like kids or a spouse, and they do get monetary compensation for that. So they won't pay for meals here if they've got kids at home. And if they have a spouse, you've obviously got to prove de facto or be married. But if you've got a spouse, you do get paid a little extra just to help with the difficulties that you, you know, you've quit your job wherever and you've just gone halfway across the country or, you know, the whole way across the country to um, be away from them and they do pay you and it's a good amount more um, for that difficulty. And then in the wider army there are a lot more like rent assistance 
and things like that. You, they do look after you. You get good medic, um, not Medicare, sorry. You get good medical coverage and things all free. And, um, yeah. Good medical coverage. Really free medical medical coverage. coverage. Yeah. Free, free medical coverage. Free medical. Definitely good. Yeah. Yeah. Free medical, free dental, free physio. Um, you got psychologists you could go to for life for free. So once you've spent one day in the army, you're covered for life to see a psychiatrist. Um, they're really good on all that sort of stuff. Um, and then on top of that, they like they help you with like defence housing, um, all that sort of stuff. You can can get. Um, extra pay like Jones uh, Jack said about yeah like having family like they take that into consideration and if you can prove that you've got children or are married um being away from home takes toll on them as well as you so they'll help as much as they can with that yeah and, and um as a reserve uh, reservist you get um tax-free pay while you're here, which is always a good thing. Um, and you also get uh, a field allowance for the days you are outfield, which is a bit uh, additional, um, and a reserve allowance um, on top of your pay as well. Mm. Um, so there's lots of benefits that way. Um, while we're here as well, we get um, cover for any um, dental or medical um, needs that we require. Um, and as well for uh, people that have other jobs, like um, certain jobs, like there's a few police here and a few um, firefighters or other certain jobs if you're in your own business. Um, like the, the police get some military leave as well, additional to sick leave and annual leave. Um, so that's a, a good incentive as well, um, especially for them.